How's it going everybody? Mr. Green here and uh, today we're going to work on a new project for the pool. Um, I uh, in the past had made one of these and it's on top of my shed and now I'm going to build one to go on top of my wood shed and I'll have a total of 600 feet of uh, 3 quarter inch black tubing. You buy it like this, you can buy it at any farm supply store or home hardware or any other store that's like that. So. What you want to do is uh, you want to get two planks and you want to use boards that aren't going to rot so obviously use pressure treat uh, or paint the boards uh, you could you know get spruce and just paint them black too uh, I don't bother painting this part because my roof is black and just the heat that comes off from the sun is enough to uh, really warm up this tubing so uh, so what you want to do is you want to get a board you want to make a cross I'm using fence boards here that's what I used on the other project too they're just strong enough um, and we're going to take this black tubing and we're going to start to wind it all the way around in a spiral and then uh, have an input and an output and I'll tie it into my other length of tubing and then it'll be, uh, we'll get a water temperature. So we'll be back here in a minute. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure that you got your board even, evenly spaced between the two. These are six foot boards, so 27 inches, or five foot boards, so they're 27 inches and uh, 27 inches. Let's see here. This there, and that's center for me. So, put four screws, try these two boards together. Okay, and then you're gonna want screws. Take the black tubing, you set it in the center. Just like that. And then you start at the very corner and you're gonna constantly have to spin I have it on this. this in the center. So I put a screw on either side of the tubing. Try to go dead center of the board. And you continue that all the way around. And I'll be back here in a minute and we'll, uh, I'll show you again uh, when I get about halfway. So we'll be back here in a minute. Okay, so now you can see I've got a few rows done. And uh, what you want to do is just stagger <clears throat> your screws just a little bit on your board. Just so you don't want to put them all in a straight line, you will end up cracking your board. Uh, these are pretty wet still, so they're not too bad, but if you're using an old board, just try to stagger them, not too much, but uh, a little bit so that they don't uh, split. You will go through a lot of screws, but you're putting a single screw per board as you go around, and uh, that'll be enough to hold it, and once you get the weight of the water in there, it will, uh, it will never move, even in a windstorm, so... Uh, once I get to joining into uh, the second pipe, we'll, uh, we'll be back. So we'll talk to you in two minutes. Okay, so what you want to do now is I've got the first uh, coil round up, and uh, now we have to join the two pipes together. So you got to make sure you use hose clamps, and then there's a, a, a double barbed three quarter inch coupler that uh, you can join your two pipes together with. Now, Sometimes these will go on nicely, these are pretty worn pipes, but sometimes you can use uh, a little bit of dish soap or uh, something like that to get it on. There's one end on. Screw that together. Apologize for all the background noise. You get that screwed together nice and tight, and then you can join it into your next piece. Which I've got to pop a little cap out. And then you want to remember to put your uh, hose clamp on first. And then you can screw, put these two together here. And you want to try to get this joint nice and tight.
Okay, I'll tighten that one down. There we go. And then I will continue now with the second roll. And then we'll be back. I'll show you what it looks like before we throw it up on the roof. Be back here in a minute. Okay, so when you first get it hooked up, you're going to get a ton of air as it all pushes through. And I'll show you here in a second uh, how I have all mine plumbed. But first, this is what it looks like up here. So I got one up there, and then I got a huge one up over on my other roof. So it's just sitting up there, tied in the way, the same as the center, and then it comes down and then into my pool there. So the way I've got mine plumbed, all my plumbing goes into this little building here, and uh, my return line that goes to my pool, so it goes up and then up and into the pool over there, that I just put a pipe, a T, so that it goes down, and then that makes it easy for me to drain it. I put a drain just down at the bottom over there and uh, so it comes up it's pushed through here and then I have a little valve here that I can shut on and off if, uh, if it's a cold day and I don't want to be cycling the water I can just shut it off there and then I open it up but uh, the only way you can, can prime this is if you have a shut off over there that you can uh, pretty much close right off to prime that all that line up there as it fills up and then once it fills up it weighs quite a bit so it's not going to go anywhere you could put a couple of screws into it uh, I don't have a problem with wind that bad here I've never had one even budge at all so uh, but there you go that's uh, that's how you can heat your pool for about a hundred dollars uh, they're about forty nine dollars a piece and the woods pretty much free screws are generally people have screws kicking around so for a hundred bucks you can make a very cheap pool heater that will heat your pool and keep it nice and warm and keep in mind the more of these you make the warmer your pool is going to be so all right well thanks everybody for checking out this video and uh please remember to subscribe and as always if you click that thumbs up button it'd be greatly appreciated have a great day